You know, if I look around the, the room this morning, every one of us here that knows the Lord, we'll be, we'll be thankful for the cross. So we've got something to be thankful for. That's the, the foundation of it. But if we had to make a list of the time in our lives that we've walked with the Lord, um, I'm sure we could all populate the list and, 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 and throughout, you know, through the years and the months that we've walked with the Lord. Every single one of us, I don't think one of us wouldn't be able to populate a list of things that we are thankful for, that God has done in our lives, things that we are grateful for, and how he has dealt bountifully with us, as the psalmist said. If I, if I had time this morning and I could go to the ministry leaders and say, give a minute report. For instance, I see Mariki sitting over there. I'm sure Mariki would say, I'm thankful for X, Y, Z. Teachers have come in, children are growing, new curriculum, etc., etc." I see Len looking at me via time, and I went to Len and said, Len, give me a report. He would, it would be positive, it would be favorable, it would be growth, and there would be things happening. Um, if, we, if, we had an elder, if we had an elders meeting, we were looking through our portfolios, every one of us would be giving a positive feedback, positive results, positive report, of growth, of life, of things happening, of life in the body, and it's just amazing. And if I had the, the figures in front of me and we had time and I could uh, touch on the church finances, we could say, with joy in our hearts, you know, we've got a facility, an overdraft facility that we don't need to use. We've got no loans to pay. We're probably better off than we were before COVID, and I think that in itself is just a miracle, and, and that's the goodness of God. <laughs> So, so in a nutshell, then, I can say that we as a body have a lot to be thankful for. That's, I just wanted to set that. We've got a lot to be thankful for. So I want to have a, let us together have a brief look at what Thanksgiving is and how do we affect Thanksgiving. The, the easiest way for me to do that is just to quickly read some scriptures. Psalm 100 verse 4 says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. That's what the word says. Isaiah 12 verse 4 and 5 says, And in that day you will say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his deeds among the peoples like we're doing this morning. Make mention that his name is exalted like we've done this morning. Sing to the Lord, for he has done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. The goodness of God is known in all the earth and we need to be thankful. Psalm 50 verse 14 and 15 says, Offer to God thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. God says, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will glorify me. So even in the day of trouble, we can call upon him and thank him for his goodness. Philippians 4 in the New Testament verse 6 and 7 says, Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, so if I ask myself this morning, our economy, does that fit under everything or nothing? Or is it, in, it fits under there? The problem I have in my, you know, whatever, the traffic, whatever problem you can name this morning, does it fit under everything and does it fit under nothing? Yes, it does. So in other words, anything that you can bring me that's a problem or a challenge, the word says, be anxious for no thing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. So if I summarize those scriptures, I would say something like this. Thanksgiving is fundamental to us as believers. Something we have to do. Because it's the only means of communicating with God that is inclusive of worship, prayer, faith, holiness, giving, and sacrifice. Let me just read that again. Thanksgiving is the only means of communicating with God that is inclusive of worship, prayer, faith, holiness, giving, and sacrifice. All those are wrapped up into thanksgiving and they are a fundamental part of our lives as believers. Then I ask myself a question, why is thanksgiving important? Well, the Bible is filled with commands. It is filled with commands, if you read through it, to give thanks to God. Most verses will, will even list a reason. They'll go on to say, give thanks to the Lord, for He's good. They'll go on and say, give thanks to the Lord, His mercy is everlasting. They'll say, thanks to the Lord, His love endures forever. They'll, most of them will even give you a reason. And you know, as, I, as I go through that, I think of uh, that story in Luke 17, verse 11 to 19, the story of the 10 lepers. Jesus was going to Samaria, and on the way, there were 10 lepers. 
they stood afar off and they cried out to him and he looked at them and then he said to them go and show yourself to the priests so they went and did that and when they showed themselves to the priests the bible says they were clean notice that they were clean and then one of them came back and fell down at his feet and glorified him and jesus said were there not ten where are the other nine he turned to that one and said your faith has made you whole you see the difference nine in fact, in fact ten were healed but nine had the scars with the healing the one who came and glorified god made whole made well as if he never ever had the disease so thanksgiving is very very important um, it's a basic response i think of a soul that recognizes the existence of a personal and an almighty god so if my soul recognizes his existence then my heart should be thankful automatically it is probably the most important practice and attitude that a believer can develop in my opinion the the attitude of being thankful um, it will also help you to determine how close our walk to the lord when i when i looked at that i thought you know that's quite something because if i get up in the morning and i'm grumpy about everything and the traffic and the this and the that and i mean there's reasons to be grumpy but if we look at it with a thankful heart it actually helps me walk close to the Lord when I realize what he's done in my life, the goodness of what's available to us as believers, what's available to us as a body in him. We'll, you'll see that when I end off with it. Um, it will also prevent me, <laughs> I think I might have already mentioned this, it will also prevent me the sin of complaining about everything or anyone. So if you don't want to be, if you find yourself, you know, on your way to heaven, you find, you know, I'm a bit grumpy and I'm complaining and I've got reason to, just start being thankful and watch the atmosphere change. I've tried it. Thankfulness, another thing it'll do, it'll, it'll free me from selfishness. You see, when I come across someone and I, and I can see, you know, the, the, the person is trying hard, but, you know, he's got some lack. And I think, you know, I've been there, but I, at the moment, you know god is good and i've got some extra then i can it'll help me be looser and i will go and give him some of of what i've got excess so that i can rather see him lifted up than hold on to that's what thankfulness does to you it makes you a channel and then the last thing i, I thought is that it will also remove the sinful attraction of worldliness you know, if I'm thankful for the cross, that's the basic where it starts. And I'm thankful for his goodness and I'm thankful for what he's done in my life. Then I'm gonna have a heart that's for him. The world, Paul said the world fades into insignificance. He counts it as rubbish. The stuff, you know, the candy coated stuff that is on offer, that is so easily can ensnare us if we get entangled with it. It's just not worth it. And then I, I thought to myself as I looked at this, I see in this area, the neglect of being thankful as the first step, the first step only of, um, of moving away from a relationship with God. You know, if I'm grumpy and unthankful and miserable, it's almost like I've taken a step away from a relationship with God. And ultimately, if I carry on doing that, that could lead me into a plunge of darkness where, you know, where things are dark and where you just not, I wouldn't be a nice person to be around because I've got so much to moan about and nothing to be thankful for and I don't ever want to be that person. Romans, uh, the reason I say that is because I found in Romans 121, it says, because, listen to this, although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were they thankful, but they became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. So there it's backed up in the word. So, I see thankfulness as an awesome, fundamental part. Not only, it's good to have a day, but it's more than just a day of thankfulness. It's actually, it's a heart of thankfulness and it ultimately develops into a life of thankfulness because it's a 24-7 a every week, every week of the year, every day of the week. Um, in in uh, Colossians, um, Paul gives us like a concrete foundation here. So I wanna read that, just quickly read it to us and then I'll go through it. Um, Colossians 1 verse 12 to 14 says giving thanks to the father so he starts off to the Colossian church and he says give thanks to the father who has qualified 
That's the first reason. Us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light and has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love in who we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. So it's not just like some, you know, a bubble of vacuum of ignorance. You know, you've just got to be thankful. You know, you've got to be thankful. What for? So Paul gives them a concrete foundation, he says, and the four things, that the, they, they're amazing. And look, when you go through the word, there's a lot more than four. But I thought these were really valuable, pertinent, so solid. He says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us. Qualified us. So you qualified, eh, Jenny, to be partakers in the inheritance of the saints of the light. So when you've come to the Lord and you've, you know, you've, you've been the side of the cross, you are qualified, Brunk, to be a partaker of the inheritance of the saints of the Lord. And that's a big inheritance. And as we sit here this morning, we are qualified. So there's a good one. And then it says he's delivered us from the powers of darkness. Man, oh man. You know, the Son of God came to the earth to break the power of the enemy and to set captives like myself free. He's delivered us. So qualified and then delivered from the power of darkness. And then after he did that, he translated us into the kingdom of the Son of his love. So out of that mess that I found myself in in the world into this amazing kingdom of the Son of his love where Christ is king and we are to serve him. And then he has... It's, and then the fourth reason he gives them, and it says, in whom we have redemption through his blood. So all the way back to the cross, the forgiveness of sins. That's what I started with. You know, I said in the beginning that it's probably the basic thing for us as believers would be, would be the cross. We can't ever not be thankful for the cross. The cross never loses its power. It never becomes a stale story. The cross is probably the most in my mind, the most amazing, powerful, significant event in the history of mankind. What happened on the cross of Calvary. And, and, and that, as Paul's given us those reasons, you know, changed all of this. So where, where if I use myself as a, a lost, dejected, living in darkness person out of God's presence, can be eternally thankful that every day, every moment of every day, we dwell in the presence of a living and a mighty God. Isn't that, <laughs> isn't that amazing? Thank you, Dion. Isn't that amazing? So, so thankfulness. I've basically, I think my time's almost gone and I've wrapped, but I, I just, I just want to give one quick little testimony in our own lives. You know, I, I spoke about years and days. It's not just a day thing. There's, there's two little girls sitting here with me at the table this morning that, that live in Durban. Their dad's in Italy at the moment because he's a rugby coach. But three years ago, roughly three years ago, we, I was up here on the stage uh, with Vainant and Len, we had rugby jerseys on and we were singing a song and it was, it was a, some dinner that evening. I see Eric's nodding his head, he remembers. We were having lots of fun. And at that stage, uh, Jenna had just had RV. She, you know, they couldn't have children herself and Dave. And she was about two and a half to three months. I'm not going to look at Gal because I'm going to get corrected. She was about two and a half to three months into this RV pregnancy with twins and my phone rang. And it was Jenna on the line. And she said, <laughs> she said, Dad, I've got problems here at home and, I, and I'm bleeding and there's complications and you know what do I do so I looked up and there was Len and I saw Judy Lindsay and I saw Magretta and I just said follow me to the office they, they you know we got there and I said this is the situation let's pray and we just prayed together Gal was with us we prayed and we spoke life and we gave God thanks and we thanked him for life and we thanked him for those twins we said Lord it's your plan and we can't see anything else but that and we desperate and here we are and we thanking you and about, you know, I obviously spoke to Jenna after that and, and it had improved and there were some things along the way, but two and a half years or three years after that, they're sitting here, they're two and a half years old and for that, I just want to thank God. That's what it's about. Thank him and give him glory.